Hello friends, I'm Sajar Rabi and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. This video is not some part of those Pyrofix series which I've published before, but its subject is somehow related to those videos and that's why I decided to put this video into that playlist. In this video, I want to talk about rendering fire and explosion with Renderman, Redshift and Arnold. We have lots of tutorial in the internet about this subject and the main procedure is so simple. We have some kind of volume shader for any of these rendering engines. We have standard volume in Arnold, we have RS volume in Redshift and of course we have Pixar volume in Renderman. We are going to use density as a source of the smoke, we are using temperature or sometimes flame as a source of the fire. But what makes this tutorial different than the other tutorials is trying to create custom shader for any of these rendering engines which is supporting most of the features of new pyro shader in Houdini 18.5. As you know, the new pyro shader has some very useful and cool features. Uh, you have volume scattering, you have control volume option in the density tab, you have fire masking and of course you have secondary fire for trail. So this video is divided to different parts. In the first part, I am going to show you how these features are implemented inside the pyro shader and try to do same thing in Arnold. If for any reason you don't have enough time to watch whole of the video, uh, I already created uh, this custom shader for you. You can download them at the link in the description below and just jump to the last part of this tutorial. In the last part, I'm going to show you how you can install my custom shader for any of these rendering engines and use it for rendering fire and explosion with Renderman, Arnold and Redshift. So let's jump into the Houdini and begin it. Okay, before we start, let me show you what new features we have in new pyro shader in Houdini 18.5. So let me drop down geometry network. I'm going to use um, pyro bake volume. Inside pyro bake volume, we have pyro shader and it has some new uh, features. We want to add volume control of density to our Arnold shader, this part. We want to add entirely scatter part with most useful parameters. And we need to have fire masking, which we have it here. And of course, secondary fire, which is useful for rendering the trails for explosion. Let me create a simple explosion and try to render it with the mantra and see uh, what's the difference between Mantra and Arnold? For doing that, I just want to use very simple setup of uh, explosion, which we have here. And I'm not going to change the, all of the parameters to have the better look because, because I did this on my first video about explosion. For now, I just want to use this option here. If you remember, I told you that if you want to have better volume scattering after bake volume, it's better to generate temperature during the simulation time and maybe with more disturbance. Okay. Of course, we need to have more wax cells. Let's try 0.05. That should be fine. Now it's time to use the pyro bake volume with more density scale. And of course, light source, spotlight with a little more exposure. And of course, camera from this side. Okay, just turn on scatter part with more scale that should be fine maybe with less mass center okay for rendering this explosion 
we need just to drop down a mantra node and everything is ready press render button here is our result with mantra i'm going to keep it now let's do a simple setup for our node drop down and now out to arnold another geometry network here object merge and out to ar before rendering explosion with arnold you need to do something Arnold is just working with VDB, but we have um, standard Houdini volumes as well. So I'm going to use convert VDB node to convert all of volumes to VDB type. Now all of them are VDBs. And we need to have Arnold volume shader, Arnold material builder inside it. We have standard volume. Just connect output volume to volume. We have some parameter to control the look of explosion. Ah, we need to use R node light as well. With same transformation as um, mantra light. So just connect translate to translate rotate to rotate the type should be spotlight and in the out network i want to use arnold cam one is correct but we need to uh, use our uh, arnold version for as a force object so it's arnold same for the light arnold light and if you render this you should have some problem let me try with arnold okay that's because currently the arnold explosion is not using our arnold shader is is still using the shader inside the pyro shader inside pyro bake volume even if you set material to arnold shader it shouldn't work as you see that's because the pyro shader is assigning to explosion with this primitive attribute here and when you have this primitive attribute your shader uh, is overriding on your shader here so you need to remove this attribute here i'm going to use attribute delete and remove material or shop material pass that's fine now uh, explosion is using this shader at the render time and we should have something that's working Maybe we need to increase density and increase exposure of the light source. That's fine. For now, the standard volume is not using um, volume scattering, which we have here the scatter and uh, as you see we have different result between um, Arnold version and Mantra version even if we are going to increase emission scale currently um, Arnold is uh, using temperature as a source of emission and try to generate the colors uh, with this black body method 
So you can control the color by these parameters here, mostly black body Kelvin, but it's not as good as what we have for Mantra. If you want to have same quality as what we have with Mantra, you have two different options. The first option is so simple, it's so fast, but it decreases the quality of your volume at the render time. But it could be so useful in some cases, for example, when you want to export your explosion as a texture file to Unreal, you can work with that method. In the second method, we can have same good quality as Mantra with Arnold, but you need to implement these features to Arnold shader. So the second method is uh, more complicated and that's what we want to do during this tutorial. But for now, let me show you the first method and the problem which we have with that method. For the first method, you need to bake volume scattering of explosion uh, to the new VDB field and use that field as an emission color in your pyro shader in Arnold. For doing that, you can just go to bindings part and turn on this parameter here and create extra volume field, call it uh, for example CE and use this CE in your Arnold shader. So for now we have CE which is baked version of volume scattering uh, with pyrobate volume in the material network. Here you need to import uh, CE volume. So in Arnold, you can use volume sample because CE is vector type. If you check its type here, it's vector because uh, as I said, it's baking volume scattering. So we have some color uh, for volume scattering and here we are going to read that CE and connect RGB to emission color of standard volume set the mode to channel and my channel name is temperature okay let's try Okay, now uh, we have better look of explosion and it's so close to Mantra version, but uh, it's so low quality and that's the problem with this method. That's because uh, with this method, we are baking our data to volume. So it's bounded to number of voxels. If you want to have more quality, you need to have uh, much more voxels uh, inside your uh, explosion but uh, what pyro shader is doing is creating that volume scattering at the render time inside the material so it depends to number of pixels not number of uh, voxels and that's why uh, the mantra version has more quality rather than Arnold so Let's uh, keep going and see how we can uh, add these features uh, to our uh, Arnold shader and have better look of explosion with same quality with Arnold. Before to start, you need to go inside Pyro shader in Mantra and uh, find the responsible parts for any of these features and try to do same thing in Arnold shader. So for doing that, I have Pyro shader in another project. Uh, before to go inside it, you need to unlock it first, allow editing of contents. Now, these are all of the nodes which are using inside Pyro shader. There is no need to know what's exactly going on here. Uh, just you need to find a different section per each different options which we have here and try to do same thing in Arnold. Let's start with control volume first, the control volume of the smoke or density. The green part here is responsible for these uh, parameters in the smoke tab, the 
um, smoke density and also this use control volume option here for a scatter we have two different parts in inside this setup the first part here is reading scatter volume and the type is vector because if you remember the scatter is producing by pyrobic volume and its type is vector so we are going to uh, import scatter volume with this part and also we have masking option and these nodes are responsible for scatter masking about the fire again we have two different parts the first part here is about reading temperature field and use it as a source of uh, the color of the ramp and also controlling the intensity of the uh, fire and we have masking option for fire as well this part is responsible for fire masking and finally for secondary fire in the case we have some trail inside the explosion i mean this option here we have this part and it is roughly same as the fire part but instead of reading regular temperature volume we are going to read trail temperature and again use it as a source of uh, fire, secondary fire and controlling the color of the fire and intensity of secondary fire now we need to uh, do same thing in Arnold to add those features to Pyro shader in Arnold. I'm not going to implement these features uh, step by step during this tutorial because I thought maybe it makes this tutorial a little boring. Instead of that, I'm going to show you the setup which I made already and uh, just explain how I add these parts on that setup you need to install my Arnold shader which I uh, put its link at the description below so in the asset install asset library and choose pyro shader underscore AR it would add two new nodes uh, inside the Houdini one node is for uh, Arnold material builder we have pyro shader Arnold core and it has some uh, new parameters which we have for pyro shader to work with this node you need to have volume standard volume as well and just connect density to the density and emission color to emission color so uh, the density data and emission color are computing with this node and we are sending those information to Arnold standard volume here you need to change the mode to channel and um, usually using density as an emission channel and of course there is no need to do this by your hand because in the object level inside geometry network you have another node JK pyro shader or AR this node is uh, something uh, like pyro bake volume which we have here if you go inside pyro bake volume we have pyro shader for mantra and if you are going inside uh, this node here you have two different material network for example let's go inside the explosion we have this setup which is made already for you and all of these parameters are connected to the parameters at the top level same as pyrobic volume uh, you have two different presets if you are working with fire you can just use fire if not you can use explosion and uh, 
And of course, we have to differentiate their pair each preset here. We're working with this node unit just to connect it after bake volume and of course convert your volume to VDB. Okay, uh, I will talk about this node uh, on the next part, but for now, let's see how I build this setup and how I add these features in Pyro Shader for Arnold. So uh, we are going back to material network and I will explain it to you with this Arnold core here. Just unlock it and dive inside it. Each color parts are responsible for adding these features. Uh, this part is for volume control of smoke. This part is for uh, scatter and we have fire masking and fire and also we have secondary fire. If you look at it uh, very closely, it's pretty much same as the setup which we had uh, in Pyro Shader. Let's start with the first part. In Pyro Shader, uh, for smoke density, we have two different parts. The nodes at the top are responsible for controlling the density of the smoke, and these nodes are responsible for this parameter here use control volume there is no need to add these uh, nodes uh, into your setup because uh, we already have some useful parameters in standard volume for our load which is giving us some control over the smoke for example we can control the density of the smoke we can control its color with the scatter part and we have transparent part as well the only thing we want to add is volume control so let's see what we have for volume control the main idea is so simple uh, we are reading the volume uh, of temperature and remapping temperature based on these two parameters The control range and density scale so we have fit function here to remap input temperature and we need to multiply it by input density and also we have another parameter here to decide if we want to use this control ramp to control uh, this operation as well so we have a switch here in the second input of the switch we have these nodes the first fit is uh, remapping temperature or normalizing temperature mm, between 0 and 1 because we want to use it as an input of this ramp. The output of the ramp is between 0 and 1 but we need to turn it back to between 1 and 2 so we have another fit function to change the value between 0 and 1 to or density scale minimum and maximum the switcher parameter is connected to this parameter here as well and that's it just multiply it the output of the switch to your density we have same thing inside my setup here is the part for density uh, control reading density and temperature the type of volume sample is flowed because both of them are flowed we have a range node inside the arnold network range node is same as fit node in vex remapping the input temperature multiplied by density and if we want to use ramp we have another fit here sorry another range actually in arnold Connect it as into the input of the ramp and this ramp is here and again remapping the output of the ramp to our 
minimum and maximum density scale same as here and we have switch in R node as well just be careful about working with the switch inside the R node it's just uh, vector 4 type there is no switch node for float or vector 3 or integer so if your input is a uh, float you need to convert it to RGBA or vector 4 before uh, working with the switch you can use float to RGBA to convert your float input to RGBA and connect it to the input of the switch and finally here we are multiplying the result of these nodes by density scale and we are sending the, the density to outside of the digital asset here and use it inside the standard volume that was for volume control let's go for scatter part for scatter part in pyro shader of mantra it's reading uh, volume scatter and use it inside these two snippet nodes these nodes are same as wrangle node in sub uh, level or sub geometry uh, level and we have some vex expression here to control this input scatter and of course the output but uh, i didn't implement these two vex expression inside my setup that's because these expressions are responsible for these two parameters usually for explosion i am getting a very good result without using these two parameters and that's why i didn't use them inside my setup so inside my setup i just simply read uh, scatter volume if you go down there we have volume sample rgba to read scatter volume and multiply it by k scatter which is scale of your scatter another part is scatter masking it's just about reading density uh, volume and find a threshold value based on these two parameters and multiply it by input scatter we have another snippet node here in our node uh, we don't have same node as snippet which we have for um, mantra so you need to uh, use some mathematics node inside our node network to do same thing as what we have here for example in the first line we have mask width times by half here we have multiply node and uh, multiply the mask width by half uh, all of the mathematics node inside our node are vector three um, so you if you are working even with float you need uh, to uh, use multiply with the type of vector three inside this function we have mask center minus mask width so here we have subtract to uh, subtract mask width by mask center we have mask center plus mask width we have again mask center plus mask width and we need to find a maximum value between this expression and zero number so we have mask node here and the first input is the result of subtraction and the second input is zero and we have fit function to uh, remap the input mask by this expression to the number between zero and one so we have range here to uh, remap the input density based on the result of these nodes and uh, convert it to some number between 0 and 1 after 
this node we have complement node so here we have complement node and if you want to use mask ramp in pyro shader we have this ramp node here we have same thing inside my setup because we need to have some float number as the input of the ram i used rgb to float we have switch same as here but there is no switch because we have uh, if a statement or condition statement inside wax it's working same as switch so i have switch here which is connected to this parameter and we need to use uh, follow-up attenuation inside this uh, power function same thing here we have power node the exponent is connected to scatter attenuation this parameter and clamp its output clamp its output same in pyro shader and finally multiply it by the result of uh, input scatter and multiply uh, and k scatter so same in pyro shader multiply the input scatter by scatter mask and we need to use its output as a emission color and connect it to emission color of standard value that was for scatter part let's go to the next part inside pyro shader we have this part to generate fire uh, we are reading temperature volume and use it uh, to control the color of the fire with this ramp and uh, the intensity of the fire we have different option in pyro shader to compute the uh, color of the fire we have color ramp physical black body and plank black body i'm usually work just working with the uh, color ramp because it's more artistic and controlling the color of the fire with this ramp is much simpler than for example black body so here i didn't implement this pyro black body in, inside my setup and i just use this simple method with this uh, ramp parameter inside my setup here we have fire reading temperature field and remapping this temperature field based on color range mean and max these two parameters and connect it to fire color ramp which we have it here and in the other hand we are reading again temperature field remapping the temperature based on these two parameters these two parameters and normalizing the input temperature between 0 and 1 use it as the input of the fire k ramp which we have it here and we have another switch node to decide if we want to use this ramp or no and multiply its result by the result of the color and we have k fire the scale of the intensity of fire and use it as a, a emission color output as you see we have different parts which are responsible for generating emission color we have volume scattering we have fire and we have secondary fire so as a result we, uh, we need to uh, add the result of any of these parts together that's why i have some add nodes here to add the result of the scatter with the result of the fire and sorry fire and the result of the secondary fire and use it as an output 
of uh, our digital asset, the emission color. That was for the first part of the fire, but we have masking option in fire as well. Same for pyro shader. The masking part is here. If you look at it uh, very closely, it's same as the scatter masking. So we have same thing inside my setup, the fire mask and it's same as scatter masking here. And multiply its result by the output of the fire network. And the last part is secondary fire for trail inside the pyro shader. This part is responsible for secondary fire. It's same as the fire part, a little simpler. And of course, for secondary fire, we don't have any masking option. So inside my setup, this yellow part is responsible for secondary fire or trail. Uh, it's same as the fire part, but instead of reading temperature volume, we are reading uh, trail temperature to control the color of the secondary fire and intensity of the secondary fire and add it to other emission parts. I have some more switch nodes inside my setup. One is here, another one, another one. These are uh, useful for turning on or off these features of Pyro Shader. Okay, that was for uh, my setup or Arnold. Let's go for renderman version and see what's the difference of this setup between Arnold and renderman. To work with my renderman shader, you need to install its digital asset first. Pyro shader underscore RIS. And it will add a new uh, node inside sub geometry network. So we have geometry network and pyro shader RIS. To work with this node, it, uh, you should do same thing as my Arnold version. Use it after pyro bake volume because we need to have scatter volume and don't forget to convert it to VDB. We have the uh, same parameters as what we have in Arnold version. The smoke, fire, scatter, secondary fire. And uh, let's dive inside it and see how this shader is working. And in the next part, I will show you how you can work with this shader to render explosion or fire. Inside this shader, again, we have two different shader per each preset. And we have PXR material builder for renderman. And inside it, we have our setup. As you see, this setup is pretty much same as uh, our setup for Arnold. We have different parts here as well. We have the scatter part. We have density, fire mask, fire, and secondary fire. The only difference between Renderman version and Arnold version is the way how I implemented this setup for Renderman. Honestly, I think uh, creating custom shader for Arnold is much simpler than Renderman because we have more useful nodes there. And also we have some limitation in Renderman. Just let me show you. For example, in Arnold, we have 
some mathematics node we have range node and in renderman there is no range or fit node so you have to use this uh, expression or pixar expression node in renderman and write down your expression here this node is same as that snippet node inside the pyro shader and here i've used this function inside uh, expression or for example here there is no complement node inside renderman and again i've used this expression node here actually working with this expression node is not so hard you have multiple input you need to connect your data to input based on the type in this case because it's float i connected it to the first float input here i created a variable and i put the data of the first input inside this variable here is expression of complement one minus a so we have complemented version of the input inside the a and if you want to send the number of a to the output you need just to uh, write down the name of your variable without any semicolon if you say 5 your output is 5 if you say 10 your output is 10 in this case i want to send the number of a to the output there is another limitation when you are working with pixar switch or switch node inside renderman there is not multiple input so when you have multiple input you need to connect all of them to this dynamic array node or build dynamic array node it build a array version of all of your inputs and you can connect its output to your uh, pixar switch node and the last one is about working with ram parameters in renderman there is no float ram it's just vector and in some cases it's a little hard to work with vector type of the ram for example for fire it's much easier to control the intensity of the fire based on uh, float ramp so what i did is uh, just uh, keep going with vector version of the ram so we have vector ramp here but at top level i've used a uh, Houdini regular flows ramp and if you right click and choose type properties in the scripts tab I write some Python code to convert and connect the result of this uh, float ramp to this vector ramp which I've used inside the renderman network I don't want to make this tutorial so complicated but if you are curious to know how I uh, use this Python code to control the vector RAM inside the renderman you can go to the parameters and find the fire intensity of fire 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 intensity RAM with this code i call that jk connect ram function inside hda module which we have it here or jk connect ram function inside python module and because it's written inside callback script by doing any change on this ramp your function is executing let me show you just make a copy of this window by pressing alt shift and c and here by changing the ramp that python script is changing the fire intensity ramp inside renderman that's it and also there is another difference between renderman version and Arnold. If you dive inside 
my setup for render man we have a uh, pixar volume here this node is same as standard volume for arnold but here we are using standard volume outside of my digital asset we are computing density and uh, emission color with my digital asset and we need to connect them to the standard volume but in the render man i've put pixar volume inside my digital asset so at the top level we have some extra parameters here for render man and all of them are connected to this pixar volume so if you want to uh, work with uh, render man regular parameters of volume you have access to them with this part now let's jump uh, to the redshift and see what i did for redshift for redshift you need to install my uh, redshift version of the shader just install pyro shader underscore rs this digital asset is adding new node in geometry network pyro shader rs same as my other digital asset you need to connect it after pyro bake volume because you need to have scatter data actually my setup for redshift is completely different than what i did for renderman and arnold and that's because we have lots of limitation about creating custom shader for redshift mostly about volume the problem i had was about reading volume data separately and use them to control this volume or rs volume inside the redshift and there wasn't any way to dive inside this rs volume and make some tweaks inside it maybe there is a way but i think we must use c plus plus language to develop new rs volume if we want to have exactly same setup like renderman and arnold or mantra however what i did for redshift is trying to create some data inside geometry network and send them to the rs volume as you guess this method could decrease the quality of uh, volume or explosion at the render time so i add some uh, new parts inside my setup to fix this issue a little bit i think the result is promising uh, you can still uh, have very good uh, explosion something close to the mantra version or arnold version the most important features which we need to have in redshift is volume scattering and secondary fire and they are useful for explosion of course so uh, here we have scatter volume inside this digital asset i've used this volume wap here to compute uh, scatter um, volume based on scatter masking parameters which we had in for example arnold these parameters here if you dive inside this volume uh, wap this setup is simpler version of entire setup for scatter part which we have here and of course the secondary fire we are reading volume scatter and i have a, a fit note here to uh, remap the density data multiplied by scatter and also we are reading temperature remapping temperature these are um, as i said simpler version of the scatter masking here and send them to the flame field on the other hand as sometimes we need to have trail as well we are reading trail temperature here and uh, multiply it by the density and add it to uh, our scatter part so 
this part is simpler version of this part. And of course, we have switch node here because using secondary uh, fire uh, is optional. That was for explosion. Uh, again, we have two different uh, presets, but for fire, we don't have any parameter here because you need to control your fire directly by uh, fire RS volume inside the redshift. But I changed its parameters already for you to give you the best look of fire. For explosion, we have a few more parameters for a secondary fire and scatter part. And all of these parameters are connected to that volume wap node inside um, digital asset, this node. For explosion, as I mentioned before, uh, because we are working in a geometry network, the quality of volume is bounded to number of voxels. So I put this option here if your explosion is looking so low quality at the render time, you can turn on this option here. What this option is doing is just increasing voxels count two times and doing our volume wap operation and turn the voxel count to what we have as at the input. So here we have 0.2, for example, for a scatter. We have 0.1 here, so we have more voxels. 0.1 and at this point we have 0.2 it was very good and simple way to keep the quality of the explosion at the render time and this uh, parameter here is connected to these two switch nodes that was all about how I build these setups for renderman redshift and Arnold and in the last part of this video, I'm going to show you how you can use my custom shaders to render fire and explosion for Arnold, Renderman and Redshift and try to do some test render. Now I want to show you how you can use uh, my custom shader for rendering fire and explosion with Renderman, Arnold and Redshift. Also, I build very simple setup for you. You can use this project to test my custom shaders and follow this tutorial. Um, you can download this project uh, with the link which I put it in at the description below. If you download it, you would have three different projects per each rendering engine. Let's start with Arnold first. As you see, inside this project, there is no pyrofix setup for fire and explosion, and it's just a single frame of explosion and fire. That's because I wanted to keep this project so simple, and also I already talked about fire and explosion simulation on my previous video of pyrofix series. For example, this fire here, is the result of that skeleton project which we had on the part three and this explosion is the project of the part two which was about explosion and trail simulation so if you want to know how i build this explosion and fire simulation you can check my previous videos mostly part and part three of pyrofix series we are reading uh, the cache files with these two nodes and here we have a vdb version of the fire don't forget to uh, use vdb because with arnold you need to convert uh, your standard volumes to vdb type here we have by pyrobake volume because we need to have 
uh, volume scattering. We need to have a scatter data. Of course, it's not uh, necessary for fire, but for explosion, as we want to have a volume scattering inside explosion, we must uh, use pyrobaic volume. And this scatter volume uh, will be used in the shader later. And these red nodes are uh, the node which we are rendering them with Arnold engine here. If you go to the main, in the object, uh, first object is set to fire render and uh, we are going to use a skeleton as a mass object inside the fire. If you check, we have skeleton and fire render same for the explosion but without any math object just explosion render inside uh, fire render we are reading the cache files from other network we have my custom shader for arnold to use this node you need to install digital asset first install digital asset and we have pyro shader underscore ar which is uh, custom shader for Arnold. We are going to use this node inside geometry network. So if you press tab and type JK, you would have pyro shader AR. Because we are going to render fire, we can use a fire preset. And we have camera here. Everything is set up already we have two different camera for explosion and fire and also we have arnold light the type is sky doom and we have hdri texture for sky doom as you know arnold is always using tx texture format and if you are using different formats rather than uh, tx texture format it's going to convert your texture to tx format when the rendering time once the TX file is generated, it's more efficient if you change your, for example, XR file to TX format. As you see, we have TX version of the HDRI file. And once your TX file is generated, don't forget to turn off this option. Okay, we have now we have a sky doom and that's it. Let's do a test render and see what we have for fire. Okay, it's done. We have a very pretty good fire. And let's uh, talk about some important parameters inside my shader. Of course, if you were working with a pyro shader in Houdini before, which we have inside Pyrobeck volume. Uh, the settings are pretty much same as Pyro shader setting, as you see, and you can easily work with my shader as well. Just let's uh, change some few parameters for shader. For example, we have uh, control over the smoke. Maybe we need more density. We have uh, used volume control option here for masking. Of course, uh, this option is mostly useful for explosion, which we need to have uh, more details on the smoke. We have access to fire with these parameters. We have fire intensity ramp here. You can check my previous video if you want to know more about how you can uh, improve the look of your fire with this ramp and we have masking part of fire as well and volume scattering is here and again mostly we are using scatter for explosion but if you have uh, scatter data for fire, you can do this for fire as well. We need to turn on masking part for volume scattering.
and we have secondary fire um, when you want to have trail inside your explosion you can use secondary fire i am going to talk about it and the explosion and also we have binding parts to decide which volume data we want to use per each part for a smoke scatter and fire same as what we have here in pyro shader we are going to use same shader for explosion and here let me just remove this node and again type jk you would have pyro shader just uh, instead of fire you need to change the preset to explosion and here is the explosion as you see also we have a secondary fire or trail that's because this option is on in the binding part uh, it's going to use trail temperature for both intensity and color volume and also uh, control volume is turned on uh, you can play with these parameters if you want to have more uh, density on on some area of the smoke for example 2 and 10 because uh, sky doom light is a little heavy just let me turn off for testing or shader okay in the scatter part you can control volume scattering and secondary fire is here if you want for example increase intensity of the trail just play with this scale Okay, let's do a test render with SkyDome. For fire, it's usually a good decision if you have some motion blur. So in out network for fire, the properties, we can just turn on motion blur part and in the object level, in the Arnold motion blur, for geometry, you can play with these parameters and for volume, it's going to use velocity motion blur once you have velocity volume which we have for fire well x y and z if you want to increase or decrease velocity blur you can just play with volume wrangle here just type volume wrangle and velocity times equal for example 0 0.25 I already did the animation around there for both fire and explosion with Arnold let me show you for fire I've used motion blur but not for explosion because I wanted to render it faster and the last thing I want to mention is sometimes you want to uh, have more control over your shader on that case you can just jump inside pyro shader for, uh, we have two different shaders for fire and explosion based on this preset 
for example for fire we have a standard volume you have control uh, to you know, regular parameters of standard volume for Arnold and here is a pyro shader core which I uh, built for this shader and you can just unlock it dive inside it and doing some tweaks inside inside this network and if you want to uh, create your own shader uh, for some reason you don't want to use with my shader inside the geometry network you can just go to material network type arnold and here you need to have volume standard volume and of course pyro shader arnold core connect density to density emission color to emission color and change the emission mode to channel and set emission channel to density or temperature based on what you want to do that's it and of course don't forget to remove the material attribute which pyro make volume is using for material here we have shop material pass so if you don't want to use this method you need to remove that attribute first material shop material pass and set your material here in the render material and in the material network like this if you forget to uh, remove shop material pass the our uh, the mantra version of the material which we have inside the pyrobake volume is overriding to your arnold uh, material and it's not working with arnold and don't forget to connect output volume to volume that was for arnold engine now let's uh, going for renderman and see how you can use my custom shader for renderman okay for renderman open my renderman project we have same nodes here as well same as arnold we have two nodes for reading the cache file pyrobake volume to produce uh, scatter for fire I didn't have a scatter but I can turn it on if I need it and here we have a skeleton we have fire render node we are reading and our cache file from this network I will talk about this node later and we have pyro shader for renderman you can just install my renderman HDA JK pyro shader RIS and we have one node inside geometry network for some reason there is no uh, new node inside material network i had some issue for publishing so i decided just put it inside geometry network now type uh, jk we have pyro shader ris that's it because it's fire we have fire preset the settings are pretty much same as arnold but we have one extra part here I will show you why I put this here and let's do a test render in out network we have some renderman node already let me create it from the scratch just type renderman we have renderman with renderman you need to define integrator if not you couldn't render anything so uh, you, for adding new integrator you can simply select your RIS node and go to renderman we have create integrator we have different integrators based on what we want to do mostly we are using path tracer for this project i'm going to use it as well ris and it's creating a new integrator inside ris network which you can see here and the camera is campfire in the objects i want to render fire and we have skeleton as a math object same as arnold 
and light source is peaks are doom light it's pretty much same as doom light for arnold we have same hdri texture here as well and i think that's it let's do a test render rendering let me rename this node To compare to Arnold, RenderMan needs more time uh, to uh, copy all of the volume data to the memory. So at the beginning, you need to wait more. Okay, it's done. As you see, we have a uh, pretty same look as what we have for Arnold. And for RenderMan, we have same thing here as well. RenderMan is generating TEX or text format for all of the textures so when you did your first uh, render if you open this path you would have another file which is generated by renderman to make it more efficient you can uh, choose this file instead of regular xr format and test again also uh, instead of uh, Houdini image view you can use renderman image view as well for example for IPR press this button here in the shell and each window will be open soon here it is but there is another problem as you see the color inside renderman image view is different than what we have in Houdini that's because by default we are using rank color space in uh, renderman image view so in the view go to image color space and uh, select accg now we have exactly same color to um, houdini now let's talk about mm, volume motion blur in renderman if you turn on allow motion blur uh, here you would not have any motion blur uh, for volume by default that's because uh, renderman motion blur is not working with uh, float velocity x y and z you need to convert your float to vector type so we have one uh, velocity field as a vector and on that case, uh, you can have motion volume motion blur at the render time, just that. And another thing is volume motion blur algorithm in RenderMan is much different than what we have for Arnold. In RenderMan, the motion blur is some kind of the volume displacement at the render time. We need to send uh, velocity data to our shader and inside shader renderman is trying to push your volume along the velocity data and because of that you can uh, control the volume motion blur inside your shader and that's why I put this part inside my custom shader and usually you don't need to work with other parts uh, but the most important part is velocity multiplier. If you want to increase or decrease your uh, velocity motion blur for volume, you can play with this parameter here. What this part is doing, just let me show you dive inside this shader, for example, for fire, we have PXR material builder for renderman and inside it, here is my setup. At the very end, we have PXR volume node. The PXR volume is the uh, same as uh, standard volume, which we have for R node. We have some parameters to control volume. Same thing for renderman, but a little simpler. And as you see, it has its own parameters. Sometimes we need to uh, tweak some other parameters here as well. And that's why I put it here for you to have more control over your volume. So in Pyro Shader, you have my own 
custom parameters and in renderman pixel volume you have regular uh, parameters for pixel volume and also if you go down there for pixel volume we have velocity input this is what i told you the renderman is reading uh, volume or well data from uh, sub level and it's using it at render time for adding volume motion pillar so if you want to control your motion pillar you need to play with, with this parameter bottom line just don't forget to convert your float velocity to vector type if you want to have motion blur with render mat. For now, to make it more visible, let me increase velocity multiplier here, for example, 5, and do another test render, maybe with renderman render view. Now, we have much more uh, motion blur. Okay, let's go for explosion. I'm going to use this renderman node, but you need to do same thing if you want to add renderman node by yourself and don't forget to use integrator. The path tracer. If you have uh, um, cast this in your project, usually you're getting better result and less noise if you keep going with VCM integrator. But in this case, I am going to work with Path Tracer. So it's set up already, object, explosion, doom light, that's it. Inside object level, we have explosion render, same thing for motion blur. Of course, for explosion, we don't have any velocity blur. And I didn't have any velocity volume but you can have it if you need to render your explosion with motion blur same note here just press jk pyro shader ris the preset is explosion you can dive inside to your uh, shader network with this part as well and explosion let's do this with render my image view Sometimes when you are going to render your project with the IPR render at the shelf, it's going to use your latest renderman node for rendering. But for now, I want to use explosion. So in that case, you can go to renderman menu and uh, select explosion. And here is the result of my explosion. As you see, we have the uh, same look as what we have for our node and i think everything is fine now let me show you uh, the animation result for both and fire with pixel renderman which i did already and here we go uh, fire and explosion which i've got with uh, pixel renderman we have a little motion blur for fire we have trail uh, on the explosion and that's it now let's jump into redshift and see how we can use my shader for explosion of fire in redshift okay same here for redshift just open a uh, redshift project we have same nodes here with exactly same setup and i will talk about this node soon and here we have our cache files and i have pyro shader rs and again you need to install redshift digital asset pyro shader rs and we have pyro shader rs in sub level jk pyro shader rs and for fire, the preset should be fire. As I said at the beginning of this tutorial, we have completely different setup for Redshift. 
and that's because we have some limitation for creating custom volume shader so uh, as you see we have different setup and parameters here for example for fire there is no parameter here and you need to dive inside digital asset and tweak redshift shader directly here is rs volume which is uh, same as uh, pixar volume for renderman or standard volume for arnold but i did uh, some setup already for you so uh, by default it should give you a very good uh, look of fire and another uh, difference is uh, in Redshift we don't have a uh, float ramp to control intensity of the fire so you have just one ramp parameter to control both color and intensity of your fire and uh, I have an issue for um, publishing Redshift shader inside my digital asset and maybe it was a bug or something however because of that I had to uh, lock absorption color of this ramp and I've written a note here for you so if you want to work with uh, absorption ramp as well you need to unlock the color by yourself now let's uh, keep going with this uh, fire setup and see what result we would have and then I will jump to explosion setup and uh, show you how you can work with this few parameters to control your explosion so in the out network you need to create redshift just press tab and type redshift we have redshift node and once you create a redshift render node it's going to create redshift ipr node for you as well and that's how redshift is working in houdini when you want to render your project with redshift in ipr mode you don't have direct access to actual render node by this menu here instead of that you have access to redshift ipr node just you need to link this node to your actual render node so you can select it and drag this node by left click to link wrap your actual parameters of render are exist on this node and let's define our correct camera it's campfire in the objects I'm going to tell it to use um, fire render we have a um, force matte object here which is a skeleton but in redshift beside of this menu you need to go to object level select your skeleton in the redshift parameters in the mat you need to turn this option on as well and same for light we have RS light doom in redshift it is same as sky doom light for Arnold or Pixar doom light for renderman in the light setting we have same HDRI map here and that's it let's do a test render and see what we have okay I think that's good I think that's good of course you shouldn't expect to have very uh, fancy results same as Arnold and Renderman uh, Redshift is much faster than uh, those rendering engine but in the other hand you would have better result for uh, especially for explosion and fire with Renderman and Arnold you can use Redshift render view as well just uh, go to the Redshift in the shelf and press this button here here we go now let's go for our explosion and see how this shader is working with explosion just uh, don't forget if you want to uh, change the parameters of the fire in your shader you need to dive inside pyro shader you can control the smoke by this parameter here and you have access to your fire by this parameter here And also I need to mention that when you have volume and light source by default the light source is not affecting your volume uh, so in the light settings you need to go down 
and, and set contribution scale from zero to some number, for example, one. Just let me show you. Let me increase density of smoke. Okay, we have some smoke here, as you see. But by default, contribution scale uh, under volume is zero. So we don't have any light affecting on the volume. And usually you need to set it to one. That's it. Now let's go for explosion. For explosion, we are going to use same shader. Just press tab, JK, Pyro Shader, RS. And you need to change preset to explosion if it's not. As this setup is producing some volume information in the geometry network, you would have uh, less quality at the render time. So I put this option here, which improve the quality of your volume at the render time. And of course, if you have enough number of white cells already, for example, when your explosion is very high resolution, there is no need to use this option because it makes your rendering so slow. But once you don't have enough number of white cells in your actual explosion cache file, you need to turn this option on. Let's keep going with this setup and see what explosion we have. I'm going to render explosion, press render. Here we go. We have uh, explosion with redshift. If I want to show you how this option is working, this version is uh, by using this option. Let me save it. And another one without this option. As you see, we have a little better result with using this option. The setting here is so simple. You can control the scale of your volume scattering with this parameter. Or you can control masking part by these two parameters. And also, if you want to have a trail, as you see, there is no uh, trail fire at the tip of each trail. You can work with this secondary fire here. Just enable fire. Just let me turn it back to default. And turn on enable fire for secondary fire. That's it. To control the color of fire inside explosion and also the color of uh, secondary fire, you need to dive inside this digital asset in the explosion. Uh, in RS volume, you have um, these ramp parameters, which will be used for changing the color of fire. And you have more parameters in RS volume to uh, work more on the look of your explosion. Now let me talk about uh, adding volume motion blur in Redshift. Because there is one important note which I need to say and I'm going to render fire Okay, uh, in Redshift, you need to uh, go to Redshift Parameters, Volume tab, and turn on Use Velocity Grid. And also, make sure you have Velocity data as well. We have well X, well Y, and well Z. And uh, Motion Blur should be on in Redshift Motion Blur. Of course, these are 
using uh, geometry for motion blur. In this case, we have volume. And let me turn off this node for a sec. Do a test render. Okay, motion blur is on, but we don't have any motion blur here. That's because If you remember on my previous videos of Pyrefix, I said when you want to cash out your simulation to the disk, it's good to increase voxel size only for velocity. That's because uh, we are usually using velocity only for motion blur and having less voxels for velocity is not affecting your motion blur so much and it helps you to have uh, less size for cache files on the disk and also it improved uh, the speed of rendering a little bit but uh, you would have problem when using velocity in redshift for rendering motion blur with this method in redshift you need to have exactly same voxel size for velocity as what you have for density and temperature and that's why we don't have any motion blur right now so to fix this issue you need to use another delivery sample here and set define transform to match reference VDB and I want to change the uh, voxel size for velocity and my reference field is density right now the voxel size for velocity is 0 0.1 and we have different one for density by this node we would have exactly same voxel size for velocity Now let's render this with uh, having same voxel size for both velocity and density. As you see now we have motion blur and the fire. It's not perfect, it's not so fancy, but it's better than nothing. And you can control the amount of motion blur with this velocity grid scale here. okay so if you didn't have any motion blur at render time make sure you have same voxel size for velocity and density and temperature of course but it's not important for scatter and also make sure uh, velocity data are float not just one vector velocity field now let me show you my test render which i did for fire and explosion with redshift You can make it much better uh, by doing some color correction with compositing software such as Nuke and I already show you some uh, simple tricks about that on my previous video about fire and also my first video for explosion. Okay that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to say about rendering pyro fx with renderman redshift and arnold i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you in the next one thank you